Today we're driving the 2020 Hyundai Ioniq Electric. So far this year we've driven the standard hybrid and the plug-in hybrid, and we have really enjoyed both of those. This is the third version, the third flavor of the Hyundai Ioniq, and uh, this might actually be the best. So we have some updates for 2020. We have a slightly larger uh, touchscreen. We have a more powerful motor. This now makes 134 horsepower as opposed to 118 horsepower. So a little bit more shove from that electric motor. And we have a battery that can charge quite a bit faster. This can charge up to 80% in about, I think, 54, 51 minutes or so. We also have longer range from that battery. We have 170 miles, even though it's telling me right now I have 185 miles at 96% charge. If I turn on the air or the heat, this has a heat pump too, that range drops down to 162 miles, which is probably a little bit more accurate. Um, from what I've read and from what I've experienced driving this so far, the range estimates are actually pretty true to life. So we'll be testing that some more this week. But uh, for the most part, let's walk you around this thing, show you what it's all about. We are in a top of the line limited, so we have this Harman Kardon sound system. We'll, uh, we'll walk you around, go for a test drive, and do a little sound system test at the end. They've done a few changes to the exterior of this Ionic Electric. We have new aerodynamic wheels, a slightly revised front end with these two little flaps that open up. Uh, whenever the battery needs extra cooling. We've got some different headlights, a couple new colors, you know, the usual refresh stuff. I think uh, it's starting to look a little bit more like a Prius, but it definitely has that eco-slippery car vibe, and uh, it is very aerodynamic. It has a 0.24 drag coefficient, which is quite impressive. And uh, honestly, this may be one of the most efficient electric cars on sale today, uh, just, just in terms of overall energy consumption and usage and efficiency. So that's pretty cool. We've got our uh, charge cable at home plugged into the outlet, so I can't really show you that here, but let's go and uh, let's fold these seats down and see what they look like all the way down. You get a nice hatchback configuration with the Ionic, and uh, I think the packaging here is quite nice. Spare tire underneath, no, but you do get a tire mobility kit. We won't go too in depth with the Ionics features and packaging, but uh, we've covered that pretty extensively in my previous videos. That said though, this is a comfortable car, really easy to live with, great usability, very, um, very driver friendly. And uh, this electric car, if it is sold in your state, and if you can get your hands on one, it's probably a pretty good option. This is about 38 grand with uh, destination and all that good stuff. And it does still have a $7,500 tax credit. So you could get in one of these for uh, $30,000 or even less for the standard SE model. All right, let's take it for a drive. I do like this gray, kind of a cool bluish gray flat color. We have a nice high res reverse camera and a pretty nifty drive park neutral reverse selector here. Uh, reasonably easy to use and I like it because you don't have to look down and see uh, what button you're pressing. You can just kind of Remember that drive is on the left, reverse is on the right, neutral's in the middle. And uh, so, well done Hyundai. Um, we have wireless charging right here, right next to that, which is very well placed. You have heated seats, your drive mode selector, you get normal, sport, eco, and if you hold the drive mode selector, you'll go into eco plus, which uh, I assume is just super efficient and it'll limit your speed to 60 miles per hour. We're probably gonna just stick to ego today. Otherwise, we have our parking brake, a couple 12 volt, 180 watt cigarette lighter ports, our USB port, another USB right here to charge a phone, 
in the uh, center area. A lot of nice storage in this Ionic. And of course, down here you get a good amount of storage too. Good grippy surface so that stuff doesn't slide around. A decently sized glove box. A very nice greenhouse. I have great visibility in this. Place to put sunglasses, a sunroof, lots of uh, eco friendly vegan materials all throughout. Here we go. You can hear it slow parking lot speeds. There's just a little bit of a, a noise from the car to warn pedestrians that you're coming. And if you go in reverse, it'll emit a little bit of a beeping noise like it's a big truck. Behind the steering wheel, we have paddle shifters that control the amount of regenerative braking we have off throttle. And I'm happy to announce, this is the first thing I noticed driving the Ionic. I'm happy to say that the regen when lifting off throttle is very linear now instead of just being an on-off switch like it is in the plug-in hybrids and the hybrid Ionic that we drove. Boy, they took a bunch of trees out here. I can actually see now. That's great. I said earlier that this might be my favorite Ionic, and uh, on first impressions, I just really love the way it drives. It has a very lightweight and effortless feel to it. It's not very quick, it's not very fast, but it's incredibly smooth, and of course it's an electric car, so the power delivery is instant. Um, but it's a very usable amount of power, and it feels very nicely balanced, and uh, just kind of well suited to the car's personality. The handling, the power level, everything feels nicely matched. It's still no slouch at city, city speeds. It is an electric car after all. All electric cars are pretty much faster or feel faster than most uh, passenger cars these days just because of their nature. Let's put it into sport mode and see what happens. Immediately we get a little bit less throttle resolution. The eco tires are complaining. The Ionic has always had a very nice chassis and very good handling characteristics. This electric is no exception. Again, a decent amount of acceleration merging onto the highway. I believe it's around like an eight second zero to 60, so uh, not super quick, but also not sluggish in that you're gonna be you know, struggling to merge out traffic or make passes or get out into the road. As always, one of my favorite things about an electric car is that you can just start it up early in the morning, cold day, and just go. You don't have to worry about it warming up. The heat comes on immediately through the heat pump. Let's see what regen is like here from 50 miles an hour. Fully off the throttle. We've got it set to max with the paddle shifters. It's pretty good. Pretty strong. You can really... You can almost one pedal drive this Ionic Electric, and then once you get past under 10 miles an hour or so, you have to intervene and press the brake pedal. It would be kind of nice if you could just come to a complete stop uh, with, uh, with regen, but that's not the case. Otherwise, we have great Hyundai ergonomics and buttons kind of buttons for a climate control. At least it's not hidden within a menu behind a screen. Um, the heat comes on immediately. The uh, menus are responsive. The screen is bright and sharp and easy to read. The information display in the center is quite nice too. You can see a lot of different parameters energy consumption, which direction you're going, your trip, all that good stuff. Been averaging 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour, which is very impressive. Probably could even beat that if we, and we've just been driving normally around in this thing. 
Oh yes, that low center of gravity actually gives you pretty impressive handling at the limit. I wouldn't necessarily call this car sporty, but it definitely feels sporty around the corners. And of course, one of my favorite things about the Hyundai Ionic and many Hyundai products is their highway driving assist. This is just a great system. Um, the steering keeps you nicely centered in the lane. The radar guided cruise control is very smooth and uh, very intelligent in how it operates. It's reasonably quick to pass. So let's put it up to 80 miles around an hour here and see how it passes the slower traffic. No delay, no lag. It does a great job. It's also pretty quiet at speed for a uh, compact hatchback. This feels pretty good. Not too much wind noise. Our highway driving assist is wandering a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's really pretty darn good compared to everything else at this price point. And you even get a decent amount of acceleration above 70 miles an hour. Brake pedal feels natural and linear and progressive. There isn't a ton of bite, but it does the job. And these eco tires could definitely use a little bit more grip, but you can understand there's always a, uh, a little bit of give and take with eco tire technology and traction and efficiency and getting as much range out of these electric cars as possible. I think if it were me, I'd throw a set of, set of Dunlop Dereza star specs on here and uh, autocross it, but you know, I'd probably lose about 20% of range <laughs> with that. So let's put us into normal drive mode. Can't really tell much of a difference between the drive modes except for throttle response. There is enough power to chirp the tires around a turn, but not quite enough to overwhelm them. Like I said earlier, this car feels very balanced, and the ride quality is very good too. This feels a little bit softer than the other versions of the Ionic, a little more plush. And you can feel the low center of gravity from the battery pack handling is a little bit improved here too. I don't know guys, I think this is a pretty compelling electric car. I mean, if you don't want a Tesla or you don't want to shell out the extra money for a Tesla, this might be one of the next best options. It definitely doesn't have as much range as like the Kona electric, for example. Um, but the idea here is efficiency, and uh, this definitely does it kind of the best on the market, as far as I know. Um, and if the range works for you, you don't drive a ton of miles, something like this with about 170 miles or so might be a really solid option. Guys, well, hopefully that gives you an idea of what it's like to drive the Ionic Electric. Let's park here and uh, queue up our sound system test. We'll also play around a little bit with the infotainment. We've been driving around and we're still at 93%. Pretty good. And it's also kind of chilly outside too. It's 52 degrees. I have it set up so that my star button takes me directly to phone projection, which is very nice. So we can go in, look at all of our apps. Let's go and listen to our soundtrack playlist.
This Harman Kardon sounds great. I do really like this car. It's so smooth and fluid. And you know what? With all the weirdness in the electric car world these days, this thing just feels normal. It's not distractingly strange. Everything is familiar. Everything is, is what you're used to in a car. It even doesn't look super crazy. Super neutral. Yeah, get it, Hyundai Ionic. sound system is fantastic. No complaints there. It sounds really good. I do love this highway driving assist. My only complaint is I wish there was a way to easily turn off this, turn on and turn off the steering assist without having to go into a couple menus. Because right now as it sits, you have to go into driver assistance, driving assist, and uncheck lane following and highway driving assist. If there was just a button for that on the steering wheel, that would be the best. Uh, but there isn't. That said though, if you do a lot of miles, it's a really nice feature and takes a lot of fatigue out of the driving experience. So uh, that's that's a pretty compelling reason to upgrade to the Limited over the SE in this Ionic. Otherwise, I really like this thing. I would buy one of these. This is, a, this is a pretty solid electric car. I think it has a good amount of usable range. Um, you know, really the only decision you have to make is do you want this or do you want like a base model, Model 3, with a Tesla charging network? This Ionic might be a really nice alternative and uh, it's a pretty nice car to live with. Oh, this is interesting. We have an automatic brake regenerative feature where it will just slow down according to how far away the car in front of you is. That's kind of cool. Kind of freaky at first, because it's like, I'm not slowing down that much, but the car just does it automatically. Interesting. Oh yes. All right, there you go, guys. Don't forget to turn it off. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. On that drive, we were hammering it, and we got three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. Pretty efficient. 